overdo that actually. My nose was fucking steaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just tickles your nose and you just like breathe in just air. It's just like. <laughs> anyway, okay. Focus. Focus. I'm sounding so pro drug right now. It's ridiculous, man. You know, ah, whatever. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to CYC, my name's Nathan Hayes, and today I want to talk to you about drugs. How sexy, huh? <laughs> and I want to start by asking you, why do people, after like months or even years off a substance, why do they relapse? Why do they go back? Well, why do people get addicted in the first place? Before the chemicals get involved, why do people become addicted to drugs? And actually... There's a fact here that most people that use drugs aren't addicted. That sounds really contrary to what you understand the whole thing to be, but if you give me a moment, I'll explain it. So back in the early 20th century, the original studies on drugs were done, uh, they were really simple studies. It was a rat in a cage with two water bottles and one of them was spiked with either heroin or cocaine. And the rat always preferred the drug water and near enough always overdosed. And that's, that's a bleak ass story, but it's the story we all recognise, it's the one that we all understand. But what no one tells you is that there's a drug called diamorphine, which is heroin. It's an opioid, it's a... Uh, it's the exact same. <laughs> it's, it's heroin, and it's purer than heroin, like it's, be like it's better than anything you'll get on the street, which I know sounds terrible, but like... It's just a way to kind of conceptualize it. It's, and you'll more than likely be on that drug, dimorphine. You will be on that by the end of your life. You will have experienced heroin. It can be, it doesn't even need to on the bucket list. You will have it, more than likely. Like your granny or your, any person over a certain age that had like a hip replacement or anything like that. You yourself might've already had it if you've had like a serious surgery because it's just, it's commonly used. Um, as a painkiller for any of those things. So next time someone gets back from like a massive surgery, you just like ask them like, how the heroin? Like, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't mean to make light of, like I'm trying to keep it light cause it's a dark topic and it's tough. So someone in the 19, like a scientist in the 1970s kind of looked at the original studies and just, it made sense to him on a different level because he was just like, of course they used the drugs. It only makes sense because the rats were kept on their own. Like as much meaning as a rat's life can have, they didn't have it. So what else would they do? Like, of course they'd use the drugs. And this was his thought process. And he redid the study and he called it Rat Park. And for a good reason, because he changed the study in one key way. And that was that all the rats we're in this big cage where they had space, where they had as much food as they want. They have coloured balls and stuff like that. They have a retail shop in the corner in case any of them have an accident with a knife. Yep. <laughs> Just made that joke. But, okay. Yes, I know. I roll. No problem. Um, so, get out of the system. Because I do want you to hear this. The most important thing that he did was that had other rats in his rat park, in the cage, he had all the other rats as well. So they were able to socialize. And fuck, because <laughs> we know what rats get up to and all the rest. But anything the rats could have wanted was in the cage, pretty much. And again, they had the two water bottles. And none of them showed a preference for the drugged water. There was zero ODs. They used, they used the drug water infrequently. And zero overdoses none okay so that sounds like interesting and all the rest it's like okay there's your video and all the rest they went a little bit further a lot further because they did the original study they got rat on its own addicted to a couple of times as got a couple of rats addicted to uh, the drug put them on their own and got them addicted and then introduced them to rat park and the, they were still addicted, they still used the drug water when they got into Rat Park, they used the drug water, 
but their usage started to go down and in time it went down as in in the end they showed no preference for drugs if you hear that fully man that blows your brain that's because it's not the, like it's the drug there's effects on drugs man like drugs get you hooked you like there is chemical hooks but like maybe it's the cage maybe it's your environment now i can give you examples of portugal or switzerland who have legalized drugs and it's worked for them but i don't want to i want to keep it on this level of rats because I'm not trying to change the law or the system or it's not this big thing it's not it's not big and scary it's this personal interaction with addiction with drugs or whatever it's just this small thing that's just immediately around you how you deal with addiction and how you deal with the people close around you who might have addiction because it's kind of common it can be common because life's hard and I'm not saying you're going to get addicted to drugs. Maybe it's going to be to work or to food, or maybe it's going to be like um, video games or porn, or maybe it will be drugs. Maybe you'll just want to anesthetize yourself. Because that's what addiction is. It's wanting to be less present, less here than you are. Man, that's dark. It's, and I know it's dark. And I'm not naive, I do not think that this video is going to be like a 10 minute bloody cure for anyone that's in that hole. Like if they hear this, great. But this is more to give the people who aren't in the hole or the people who don't realise they're in the hole yet, give them the tool to get out of it. Because I can reach them because they haven't put the blinkers on. They haven't narrowed their focus to the one problem that's because that's what happens when you're stressed, when stuff happens. You lose all peripheral vision. It's not there. You just focus on the problem. And that can be beneficial, but in this situation, it's not. The solution is the opposite. Lose the blinkers. Get rid of them. Spread out the net as far as possible. Reach people you haven't talked to in a while. Reconnect. Connect with new people. That's your solution. There's a scientist in the Netherlands who wants to rename addiction bonding. And that's because his thought process is that humans are just designed to connect, to bond to things. And if we can't bond to people, if we can't connect, we'll just connect to things. So what I hope you get from this is be forgiving. Because man, if, we, if we've learned anything from like the last bloody hundred years, ever since we've made drugs illegal, it's that locking people up and putting them in a cell and when they get out, then kind of having whatever iffiness towards them and like they don't get to come back into our system we don't want them in our neighborhoods unless they really prove themselves and like you watching this you ask yourself like what would it take for someone to prove that they were over their stuff or maybe not for you maybe you're extremely open but like on average the standard set really high and most people can't describe what it is they don't know what would prove it, but it would take something bloody special. And that's, that's definitely not the solution. If we take Rat Park, that's not the solution. Your solution is spread the net, connect with people, reconnect. Yeah, hope you get that. So that's it for today, guys. I know that was a bit down, so breathe <laughs> and let it pass. Um, it's a dark topic, I know, um, and it's tough, it's tough to talk about, it, I know it's tough to listen to, but I do want your feedback on it, as always, it's always good hearing from you, and I'm always trying to improve on this, so, so yeah, thanks as always again, and, what, like, I'll see you next Tuesday, or like, you know, talking to all the young kids, whatever, I should like, put it into like, text talk, whatever, so it's like, see you next, See you on T shit. No. <laughs> okay. See you next week. Let's change it to that. That'd be a bit better, huh? Uh, <laughs> couldn't leave it on a bad note. Had to end with a joke. So, see you guys.